NASCAR dipping a toe into the electric era this year with this EV demonstration vehicle that's built on the next gen Cup Series chassis, but equipped with a tri-motor drivetrain that can be cranked up to 1300 horsepower. They're not planning on starting a new series for it just yet, but it's meant to explore new technologies and possible directions NASCAR might go in. David Reagan has been the primary test driver for this car. He's a Cup Series veteran. This is based on the next-gen Cup Series chassis that I know you have a lot of experience driving. Before we get to the powertrain part of it, does it drive anything like a Cup car as far as handling is concerned? Well, you don't have that starter and you don't have that noise when you crank the uh, next-gen car up. So that's the first thing that's different. You can have a conversation like you and I are having when I'm backing out of the garage and rolling on the pit road. But really the, the steering and, and kind of the feel of the race car is, is very similar. But when you mash the throttle and when you put on the brakes, uh, it, it's a lot different. It has a ton of acceleration and with the brake regeneration capability, uh, it stops on a dime. So those things are completely different, but there are some similarities. Up to 1300 horsepower, they can crank this is about twice what a Cup Series car has, uh, and all wheel drive. So that's got to change everything for you. Yeah, I think the all wheel drive is, is a game changer. When, when you've got, you know, both axles, you know, driving off the corner, uh, again, uh, getting into the throttle, you just have that instant torque. And, and when you're talking about over a thousand horsepower, and the technology in this car that, you know, when the, the front axle maybe starts to slip, it, it can change and move some of the power distribution to the rear, uh, almost like a traction control. Um, I've never driven anything that had this kind of acceleration and power. Uh, I can't wait to get to a bigger racetrack where I can hold the throttle down for more than a few seconds, but uh, at a track like Martinsville, uh, you you can have all the speed that you want in a very short distance. And from what I understand, you were doing nearly uh, like right within a second right. of a Cup Series car. Where was the difference in the speed? A little bit of difference is mid-corner rolling speed. So when you're off the throttle and you're off the brakes and right at the apex of the corner, uh, this car is uh, a few hundred pounds heavier and we were just a little bit slower your minimum speed. But where this car would make up the time is that acceleration, your acceleration out of the corner would be faster and really it's more efficient getting into the corner because of that regeneration uh, braking assist. Uh, you can drive into the corner a little deeper and it stops so much quicker. And so I think that if we had another couple of days to work on uh, setup and to make some uh, different changes with the attitude of the race car, I, I think that the potential for this car to go faster is certainly there. Uh, but what our objective was, was just to get some good data uh, to learn what the capabilities of this car uh, really is. And, and so we're just scratching the surface on uh, handling, balance. Uh, there's probably some aerodynamic tricks that you can do to get a little bit more downforce, adjust the rear wing some. So, so there's definitely some more speed when we would have a little bit more time. You mentioned the wing, obviously crossover style body and that separate wing, very yeah. different from the Cup Series design. Uh, does that, can, are you able to feel those aerodynamics on a track like Martinsville? You, you really can't feel it on a track like Martinsville. I think once you get to some tracks that are over a half of a mile, maybe that three quarters of a mile to one mile, you probably can. Um, I like the look of this car. Uh, we've had the sedan and the coupe uh, body style forever. We've obviously got the truck series, the Craftsman truck series, but you know, my, my wife drives a, a crossover uh, sport utility vehicle style. And, and I think the manufacturers were really excited about doing something different that looked different. Uh, it almost has that rally style look uh, to it. And, and so from a driver standpoint, when you get buckled in, you really don't know what the the, the front fenders and the nose and the rear wing and you know you, you, you kind of feel the car more through the throttle the brakes uh, the steering wheel but once you hop out of it you kind of see what it looks like but I think from a driving perspective you, you really can't tell that big of a difference. Have you talked to any hardcore NASCAR fans about what they think about how it looks? Oh I've talked to a lot of, of hardcore fans and, and you have some that are a little unsure they, they aren't too uh, they, they want their traditional V8, uh, you know, oil and, and fuel burning car. But then you talk to some more and they want to know yeah, how fast does it go? 
it looks cool, it's something different, and, and I think that's what this project is all about. Uh, having some fun, educating uh, the NASCAR fan, and also educating the non-NASCAR fan that we've got a lot of neat technology uh, in motorsports, and I think NASCAR is really looking at, at all avenues for uh, powertrain, uh, propulsion, and you look at motorsports on, on a global perspective, and, and we're definitely going into that some type of electronification stage. And I don't know if that's going to happen in the next couple of years or the next 10 years, but kudos to NASCAR for taking that, that leap of faith and, and partnering with a company like ABB that specializes in, in this electronification uh, process that we're going through and seeing what the potential is. And, and I think Ford and Chevrolet, Toyota, and, and you can name another dozen manufacturers that are very interested to what uh, the potential it's going to be like. Well, it, it makes business sense for ABB, and ABB is a global electrification automation company. Uh, so as we look at like things like the energy transition, it's happening in the U.S. right now, electrifying everything. Transportation is the beginning of that. Uh, and of course, it's important to reduce emissions. But when we look at electric demand on a big scale, utility scale, you're, you're seeing um, not just transportation being electrified, but we have an influx of factories coming to the United States with automakers building plants here in the United States, building the EV cars, battery operations, but also things like semiconductors and data centers and a, real, a lot of new industry. And, and the power demand is going to go up and you want to do that with fewer emissions. So it really makes sense for ABB to engage, be engaged with electric racing and as a conversation piece to have important conversations about energy and make no mistake, we're bringing it to the heart of America with NASCAR, right? And, and, and some of these conversations are important. So when we talk about, hey, if we had a racing series, uh, what kind of tracks would be great for an EV racer? And you can talk about the difference between a super speedway where you don't have the regenerative braking and maybe a small oval or a road course where you get that power back into the battery. Those kind of conversations are important. Talking about regenerative braking, because now you're raising the level of energy education. And these are the kinds of conversations we need to have to, to be able to go through this energy transition as a stronger country. 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, I think this has, obviously that could change. Uh, in a street car, that might get you about 250 miles of driving. Did yeah. you get a sense for how many laps or how long you could race this at Martinsville if they ever did turn into a series? Yeah, this is a lot more, um, uh, potential at a short track and a road course because of the braking regeneration uh, capability. So our, our target was that 45 minute to hour run time and, and I think that's very doable, uh, maybe even a little bit more. I, I think that uh, some of our initial testing you really learn what that balance is of, of the peak power, uh, the torque, and the, the brake regeneration. So when you look at a track like the Chicago Street Course where you've got some real fast corner entries where you're on the brakes really, really hard for a couple of seconds, uh, you get to harness some of that energy that's going through the braking system uh, just to give you a little bit more charge. So yeah, I think that 45 minute to hour window is, is very capable and to your point, the technology is evolving so quick. So I think the partners that ABB and, and NASCAR have, uh, they're going to use the best technology that's available. Uh, today uh, that might be different than what it was six months ago or a year ago and, and they're going to you know be pushing that that limit uh, all the time so yeah it's going to be a fun project to get to drive and have some fun and to learn but it will be something that will continue to evolve uh, in years to come.